Not everyone was so fast as lightning today's, either. Today's shirt, for those tuning in on the podcast, we just started recording. It says, uh, surely not everybody was kung fu fighting. Oh, that's what's up. Yes, true, <laughs> true. And let me just say my shirt, it has a donut on it from this donut cafe. Oh, where's that at? I, I got it from the Wasatch Warrior. It was okay. like in my little goodie bag. Um, but funny thing is the same outfit here. I've been wearing this since I... Um, <laughs> since I showered after my show. So I've been sleeping in it. Say, I was going to say, yeah. didn't you take a picture post? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've been sleeping in it and just living life in it, and it's super comfortable. So I just spent, you know, I'm, it's my lazy day outfit, and yeah. I have matching shorts, so. Well, know, and I had matching cocks. That's funny. The last week you've had two days like that, like when you flew back from the UK. <laughs> just feels like a zombie. I'm just like, this post-show hangover is real. And no alcohol involved. That's just, let's make that clear. Post-show hangover is what we refer to, or at least I refer to as that feeling. After a show, when you're just, it feels like you got hit by a bus. You're so tired and you are you have brain fog like none other. And you're just so out of it and just, you know. It's just, I think it has something to do with like the adrenaline and endorphins and just all the emotions you give on, on um, show day. And then like whenever you get back, it's like, when you finally get a chance to like stop, it's like, whoa, it hits you. It hits you hard. I, like my endorphins are zapped. <laughs> I just like, oh. Yeah, it, it is a weird, it's a weird thing, right? Yeah. Because like, it doesn't make sense. And like, no, you should have you're more not, energy. Yeah. Exactly. Because you're not like necessarily like physically exerting yourself, right? You're not. So. Yeah. And you generally are eating more the next day. Like it doesn't make sense yeah, how you're. It doesn't. Yeah. So, yeah. I, what's funny, what's funny too is like after like a big show will build up, I do, you know, I'm doing nothing different as a coach, but the next day I'm like tired too. Yeah. I'm like, oh. Cause you're giving all the emotion and stuff too. You know, you're just like, yeah, it's all weird. It. I'll sleep in more. And I'm like, it doesn't make any physical sense. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm not doing anything different. Yeah, so totally. anyway, Ashley, you know, speaking of post show, so it's been, who we got to get you guys caught up. Okay. We, it's been, it's been crazy. It's been cray cray. But for Ashley, it's been just a normal week for the most part. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay. It's exhausting. So, you want to tell them what's happened over the last okay. four weeks? So like, like, you know, we've done some podcasts since then, but they've been like special guest podcasts. And then you did one while I was in the UK. So like we had the bikini round table um, and we had Jessica on as a guest the next week. And then your Arnold um, recap okay. thing. So you guys might not be filled in, <laughs> but uh, I've been on a run of shows lately. You know, I um, started off at the Sasquatch Pro where I'm going to show. Yeah this awesome prize and we even got a bikini for <laughs> sassy the sasquatch styled um by angel competition bikinis and it's an exact replica of the sh the suit that i won in and that show so this suit if you like it the suit name is grasshopper the grasshopper grasshopper used code ashley k fit at checkout <laughs> <laughs> that's a sassy did and uh, she got a great discount. <laughs> is it 10% discount or something like that? What is it? I believe so, yes. <laughs> um, but, yeah, this is the grasshopper suit and um, the best trophy I've ever gotten. Yeah. By far. I saw this trophy on the gram. I kid you not. And it was like, it. basically, I was like, how can I not do this show? <laughs> I saw this trophy and I'm like, I want this trophy. How can I not do this show? I'm keeping this here. And, uh <laughs> Yeah, so Angels <laughs> Angels made Angel Competition bikinis. They made we Ashley came in the office and she had the measuring tape and she's measuring this yeah. trophy and I'm like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> and she's like, "The oh, they're making Angels is making Sassy a suit." And I'm like, "Oh, her name's Sassy." <laughs> she's so yeah. it's progressed and uh we were we were she has a suit on now, an official competition suit. Yeah. Worthy of the Olympia stage. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. An exact replica. An exact, everything. exact replica. And it even had, when it was uh, being produced, it even had a hygienic liner. <laughs> we got to stay sanitary. <laughs> We've got to stay sanitary. You know. It was, it was the most ridiculous thing seeing this girl make this like tidy little suit. <sighs> so, so shout out to Angels. Yes. Thank if you. you are of particular little size, they can accommodate. Yeah, true, <laughs> very true. So if you're if you're sassy size or even Adam size, <laughs> yes, even Adam size, even my size, they can make a bikini for you. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> my next Florida visit is going to be lit. Oh All gosh! Right. So, <laughs> so yeah, that yep. was uh, the Sasquatch Pro, which I think is funny because I won the Wasatch and the Sasquatch. It's like. I don't know, meant to be, I guess, yeah. you know? And I wore the same suit for both. <laughs> but um, 
Yeah, so the Sasquatch, I, I won that one. Um, you know, and it was a good a good idea to do this show. And the reason why is because two weeks after the show, I had the Arnold Classic UK. And from our experience, Adam, I always look better the second show. Yeah. I always look better the second show. And even more so if it's like a two-week gap in between is like that sweet spot. Yeah. Like we can really nail it for the next show. It's like the first one's a little, you know, eh. But the second one usually is when I'm the most on point. And that is what we did. So two weeks after the Sasquatch, I went over to Europe and I competed in the Arnold Classic UK, which you did a whole recap video on. So, you know, we don't have to get that deep into it. But I would say it's probably like my best look. I think it was absolutely your best look, which yeah. is funny is that um, Ashley sent me pictures of the, she's like, I think this is pretty close to the Olympia look. And I was like, actually, it's a little bit better. Like, it's actually a little yeah. bit better, which is, I think was honestly big. Like, big, because yeah. I think after you, after I said that, I think you looked at it closer and you're like, yeah, actually, I think you're right. And I think there was a point this year where we were doing a lot, a lot of working out. Like, we were doing, a, we've been, well, we've been doing a lot of training this whole year. Like, she's been training with Sam, like, all the time, really focusing on shoulders. And there was a point where it's like, man, did I even make any progress in my shoulders, she was saying. And then to see this picture, you're like, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, I did. <laughs> I felt so good about it. Like yeah. it was, you know, it's one, even putting placing aside and, and all that, the most motivating thing is seeing my own improvements. Cause I know that means that I'm capable of even more than that. Like, yeah. you know, it's kind of cool to see, yourself improve and it's hard to see sometimes from show to show to show to show to show but like when you take a step back and you even compare like a last year's like olympia which i thought previously was my best look in my opinion i think i topped that at the arnold classic uk i was full i was tight but most importantly those shoulders were popping yeah they were popping to them. Density yeah. And width to them yeah so it was like a double whammy of how excited I was for that show. So not only was I excited because I won, of course, I'm going to be excited, but I saw big improvements and that was the coolest thing to see. And it gets me all giddy just thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, so let's, this is, this is, uh, so first off, you know, congratulations too, publicly, oh, you. You know, of course, sorry, that privately, but publicly, that's a pretty amazing thing that you're doing. No one, you know, We'll go, we'll, I guess we'll go into it throughout the podcast, but you know, no one has done what you're doing, you know, in the history. And, um, you know, a lot of bodybuilders used to compete in the nineties and stuff. You'd have, you know, what was funny when we'd, uh, talking about it the other day, um, Milo Sarsiv, he competed 72 times. Holy moly. He's got Dexter, me beat. Dexter Jackson <laughs> competed a little bit more than him. And there was one guy that actually beat both of, well, he beat Milo. So I'm not sure if he beat, um, Dexter, but he was like 60, he was like 60 years old when he was still competing. He actually was winning at like 60 years old. Oh, body. Geez, yeah, that's crazy. Up. Yeah, no, that's dope. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so there's like the three, you're probably, you're probably in that group though. If you counted all shows, we just don't know how many total I shows. Don't, I have not counted how many shows I do, yeah, but, but I got to put the disclaimer out. <laughs> Bodybuilding is so much harder than bikini yeah. to compete in. You, the prep is much more strenuous. Bikini was made to kind of maintain a lot, you know, it's not easy to maintain, but it's meant to be more of a maintainable, look. maintainable, yeah. sustainable uh, look that maybe you can keep somewhat close throughout the year. Bodybuilding is a whole nother level. Yeah, so I just sure. got to put that disclaimer out because I never, although you like to do the comparison, I will never compare myself to a bodybuilder. It is a hundred times harder. Yeah. A hundred times harder. And I'm not about I'm not trying to step on anyone's toes that's a bodybuilder. No, for sure. It's tough. It's tough. I'll I can only imagine. I'll definitely agree with that. And I'll definitely agree with it in especially in today's context. Mm -hmm. Cause in you know, in like uh the nineties, the, the guys it was a little bit different because everyone was competing so much that the level of conditioning and was was a kind of all over the place too. It wasn't like a hundred percent all in at the Olympia like you see now. You know, now it's like they'll do one show a year and be a hundred percent all in at one show. You can't do that when you're competing, you know, like Milo 72 times. You have to, you're going to have hits and misses on how good of your conditioning is and whatnot, too. Um, and so that there's in today's with today's standard, there's just kind of no way of doing that in bodybuilding. But um, it is cool. This, what I like about you doing this um, is that it sets a good example and it breaks all the. I don't know if you want to call it. What would you call it? Would you call, it's not a, is it a stereotype if it's still just about 
uh, misconceptions? misconceptions, I guess it would be. Yeah. Right. So of, of, you know, you can't compete more than this many times a year. You can't maintain a look like that. Um, if you do a lot of competitions, you're going to lose a lot of muscle and you're not going to be able to progress. You're not going to be able to build muscle in a caloric deficit while prepping all the time. Like it breaks all these, all these standards that people kind of either they believe in a, and, and a lot of them, I believe too, until like doing this kind of, cause we're kind of doing an experiment. We're the only ones in the world kind of doing it. There's like a few girls who compete as often. And, um, you know, we're kind of figuring it out trailblazing as we go, which is really cool to see. Cause you get a lot of people who want to, uh, who want to do that, who want to maintain this look year round. And they're like, how are they doing that? You know, how is she getting ready for shows without doing two hours of cardio every show? How is she getting ready for shows without eating 800 calories only a day, you know? And so, um, and able to maintain the look. And I'm like, well, the reason she can do that is because she is maintaining the look. <laughs> that's, that's like one of the yeah. main reasons. And close, so, close to it anyway. Like yeah. maybe within a five pound range, which yeah. is nothing really. Yeah. And so um, it's cool to see because you're setting a new kind of a new recipe for mm -hmm. people to follow, especially people who are really serious. Because you have a lot of people who are, who want to do that, but they just never thought it was possible. Right. You know? And so it's really cool to see to just do it over and over again for, for now we're at four years doing it like this now for the most part. Um, and so it's, it's cool to see people kind of changing their mind about prep and like yeah. how it is, you know, and it doesn't need to be this crazy grind right. and it doesn't the, need to the be the extremes of like, you know, it, it's, it's like the teeter tottering kind of scenario. Like it's one extreme, it's all or nothing kind of thing. People have that mindset and it's not, it shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be all or nothing. Yeah. Not in bikini at all. And, and honestly, not in most of the division, even, even bodybuilding now they're staying leaner than they used to, mm -hmm. you know, used to see like guys like Lee priest, he would blow up in the office because we really thought you had to do that. And it was no, mm -hmm. no knock on Lee. He got in shape. He got in crazy good shape for shows, but it was just like, that was the example, you know, was, you know, there's like a famous picture of Lee with like I don't know. How I know much, what you're talking about. The eating KFC chicken, like the KFC <laughs> chicken with his stomach out. And it's like, that was very normal. And it was like a, almost like a pride thing. Like we had back in the, you know, nineties and two thousands, um, you know, aging myself here, but we would be like, oh yeah, put on, you know, like we kind of like had like a pride about bulking, you know, it was like, you know, how, cause you're like, let's hope, let's hope it's muscle. Yeah. Let's hope, <laughs> let's hope some of this is muscle. Let's hope most of it's muscle. It's just some, just some water weight. Yeah. And it was like, <laughs> let's go to the, let's go to the, we used to do this thing with the trainers. I remember it was like in 2000, uh, we had all these bodybuilder trainers at 24 hour fitness and, um, we would go there and have like, it wasn't really like an eating competition, but it was like this, like, you know, if you, if there's such thing as toxic masculinity, <laughs> it was that it was like us showing up to the, all you can eat sushi with all these meatheads that were trainers and seeing like who would last the longest, you know, kind of thing. It was, it was really fun, but it was completely stupid. And, uh, but we did it cause we thought it was building muscle, right? We were like, Oh, build muscle. Like, and I think back at it, I'm like, man, I don't know why I did that. But, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just, that is gone, right? That whole approach nowadays is completely gone. Um, and then you see people like you who's taking it, you know, you're on the other end of that, right? And you see people responding well, being like, you know, I can be leaner in the off season. How do I do that? They're asking the question, how do I do that? How do I maintain? Uh, actually, we just funny, we just had a, someone on the feed here on Instagram Live just asked that too. Any tips on maintaining a lean physique um, <laughs> as a new competitor, right? So it's cool. It's, it's a, you're, the topic is starting and you have some competitors and this is no knock to them. You have some competitors who compete once a year, twice a year for the Olympia type of thing. Um, and then you have some that are competing a lot more often like you. Mm -hmm. And I think that the one for the sport, people want to see the top girls competing more often. Who doesn't want to go to a show and see a top girl compete? I mean, I do, you know, I want to, I want to go and see them. I want to see what they look like. What are we up against? Um, you know, what, what do I have to do to get to look like that? How do I have to prep my athletes to look like that girl versus that once a year, pull back the curtain. Okay. Close off the curtain again. You know, that's not, there's no sport where you'd really want to see that like that, you know? So, I mean, I, I can't imagine being a real fan of the NBA when Michael Jordan was playing and then going to a, an NBA pro basketball game with the Chicago bulls. And I was like, Oh, he's not playing today. You know, like, Oh, he only plays during the championships. Oh, that, I guess I'll, I'll, maybe I can get to the champion. You know what I mean? It's like in every pro sport, you want to see those guys, you know? So anyway, I, I appreciate you doing it. I think you're setting a great example. Um, I think that it pushes a lot of people in corners. It puts, because it, it kind of makes them aware that they're not doing that or they're not maintaining. And it creates a lot of like pushback too, mm -hmm. because it's like, they just come up with the, any reason why you shouldn't be doing that just yeah. to make themselves feel better because they're not capable of doing it. Just yeah. mainly because their mindset isn't capable of sticking to a meal plan uh -huh. off season. And then they kind of push back on it and they're like, oh, well, she's not, 
like, oh, maybe her health is off this, that. I'm like, no, her, she's healthy. Like <laughs> we, we, we check everything. She's healthy. Like all these things. And so, um, I applaud you for doing it. I think it's a great Thank example you. and it's great for the sport. And I think that you competing off is great for the sport. Um, you know, Tarek just did a video, um, on Olympia recap. He just applauded you for doing it too. And he said, um, you know, he said, keep going, keep, Heck keep doing yeah. it, you know? <laughs> so anyway, um, so anyway, that's a long, a long tangent yeah, on that. And, and I just wanted to kind of address their question there. Cause you know, I don't want to skip over it cause it's a great question. How to stay, you know, lean as a competitor in the off season. And let me just say this. A lot of people look at what I do and think it's extreme, but I look at it the opposite way. The fact that I maintain closer to my stage look throughout the year makes my preps less extreme. Honestly, there are preps that like, the one I just recently did, no cardio. Like, it, there is a big advantage to, like, maintaining. It yeah. really. Um, so I don't have to go through this yo-yo diet extreme thing where I'm, like, either on or off, you know. I kind of hover in that five-pound range post-show. Um, sometimes a little bit more, depending. Um, but I'm never – it would be I, – I would be very um, – surprised if somebody could check if I or could tell if I was in season or off season to be honest you could tell you're my coach I can tell um but I I bet you no one else could they couldn't tell if I was three weeks out or or eight months out they wouldn't know um and I think there that is the benefit that I have is just like you know I'm able to mentally kind of just stay stay in that little range and it makes my preps not extreme at all I'm not miserable. Um, there are times I work harder than other times, of course, sure. Um, but it's nothing that I'm like, whoa, this is too much. Like, oh, my God. Like, I don't do hours upon hours of cardio. My calories don't get too low either. I'm just – people think that, like, because I compete so much that I'm doing all these crazy tactics, like all this cardio and all in this low, low-calorie diet where I'm just eating fish and asparagus all the time. No, no, no. <laughs> no. I'm perfectly happy with – you know, how I, you know, run my life, I guess, and live my life, I'm fine. I mean, of course, there's times like this where I'm tired. (laughs) I just had a crazy weekend. I'm mentally exhausted, but it doesn't really have much to do with like, you know, a continuous diet thing. It's more of like a endorphins zapped yeah, because it was so exciting. Some some of the time change is still hitting you. Oh God, yeah. Here from the UK. I don't think I was that jet lagged, honestly, when I got back from the UK. It that was, one's a hard one. The eight hours is a hard one. It was tough. We should go into like that scenario and then coming into the the um, yeah. Nevada State because we did a risky move. Yeah. Honestly, we did some crazy. Okay, yeah, okay. crazy because it was less than a freaking week away. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay, gosh. guys. So this, this is one, crazy. This is some crazy stuff. Okay, I'll I'll tell the I'm gonna tell the whole truth now. <laughs> sure, okay, because sure. it's it's after the show. Um and there was some there was some some truth being hidden when I was like asking to do this show because I didn't want to kind of disclose what we we're trying to overcome. <laughs> okay, so Tuesday, Tuesday well, Ashley back wins Tuesday. Yeah, Ashley wins, she flies in Tuesday, she comes right to the CPC. And she's like, hey, take a look, take a look at me. Let's see where we're at and let's um, assess. And it was fun. Right when I saw her walk through the door and she was wearing like kind of, they're tight, tighter, but looser joggers. Like, like they're fitted like fitted jogging pants. Yeah, fitted, but they weren't like tight. Yeah. And I could see right through those. I was like, her legs are small right now. Like everything was small. <laughs> yeah. I was like, wow, she's sucked down right now. Like she's, she's really, really down. And I was like, how did that happen? You know, how did, how did this happen you don't you don't really go that flat so yeah. one of the one of the good things is um you know when i say that you know ashley can compete all year and maintain the physique i will and if you're one of those people who just simply can't there are people out there that simply can't ashley is someone who can't obviously she doesn't go flat very easily and that's a huge advantage when it comes to like loading carbs and stuff like that because loading her it doesn't make a huge difference but it does make a, a, a difference but it's not like this huge significant difference that is on some people so there's like she's kind of made to compete often because you have all these parameters that you can kind of play within but she does spill easy too so you have to be careful with that so anyway so she's the first time i've truly seen her flat on tuesday and then she's like i should weigh in and it was like middle of the day oh yeah i it was at the end of the day i already had like five meals i was chugging water i just got back from a flight and she was 119 right oh no i was like 120 Oh, with clothes, 122 or something. Was but it? that was with clothes, with water. But basically, that would be my normal, like, stage weight. But 
considering all the factors of I had all my clothes on. I had a tummy full of water. I was chugging water. Yeah. And already five meals. And I weighed that tells me I was probably like a yeah. 119 if I if I waited in the morning instead of the evening. Yeah. We so were, we had like a reverse rebound. Yeah. Like I didn't rebound. Like I thought I was going to, it's, you know, cause I was loading up carbs and fats, especially like of the show and stuff. I, my calories never dipped below 1800. I think in that span of a week. Yeah. So it's not no like cardio that whole week. Yeah. So. And I didn't do any cardio. I missed a bo- uh, some workouts from just the landing and not, and shifting time zones and stuff. So we thought, or at least I thought I was going to, if anything, rebound because I was like, okay, I've been having way more carbs than usual, way more fats. Um, it's not like I'm, I'm probably, I was at that point still probably above my maintenance calories. It's yeah. not like I was starving myself. I quite the opposite. I was eating. Um, but yeah, when I landed, I was so small. Smooth. I and I didn't know it either because I was just wearing those jogging pants for you know who knows how long. So I didn't get a chance to see myself in a bikini. But I felt like really bony. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I feel so. I feel like a child right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, like when I saw myself in the bikini, even I was shocked. I'm like, how did I get this small? <laughs> I guess it was just like the maybe. I guess maybe not drinking as much water as usual. Although I was trying to chug, I'm used to drinking a lot of water. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe it's just like metabolism's on fire. Maybe I was just a little bit dehydrated by mistake. I don't know. Yeah, but I was small. She was small. It was it was crazy. So so she's like, I really want to do the show on Saturday and um, which you is know, less than a week. It was the six six days from yeah. stage of UK. It wasn't even a full week. Yeah. So Tuesday was so Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So we're like, was that really Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday? We're four days from stage on Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So yeah. we're like, she's like, we we. <laughs> it was just crazy. I was, I was like, like, I really want to compete at the show. It's in my hometown. I want to compete in my hometown. So um, so we asked, you know, hey, is it? Here's the, the scenario is we're just waiting. We're just waiting to see if she rebounds or anything like that. If the water is going to be, you know, accumulating. Um, is it possible we can do a um, let you guys know on. Th- we actually we asked for like a Thursday or Friday and they were like, yeah, it's be OK. But we're a little worried that we wouldn't get it in in time. Not so we, Friday. So, so oh, we decided gosh, Thursday, Thursday would be our cutoff. Yeah, we were like, well, let's just decide Thursday because just in case they don't get the, the contract in time or whatever. And it causes problems. So we're like, OK, we have a few days. So we started eating on Tuesday. And, and I ate way more food than I was comfortable with. Yeah. So here's the thing with Ashley. Ashley's grown a lot <laughs> as a competitor because she knows where her, her limits are in terms of like competing and, and, and all these different things. But, and one, the final thing where Ashley's grown to is understanding like how many carbs she can get away with, which has been hard. That's been probably one of the harder things is like carb loading where she won't freak out about the extra carbs. I would say that. Sorry. Mm. <laughs> she's, she's like always worried that they're going to make her spill over because it does happen. And there's, she's, she's just in that. And so, she did it. You did it like a champ. You ate all that food. Um, I was so nervous and I felt guilty. I was like, I don't hope I don't spill. <laughs> so we were on, we're like, we got our mops out. We're ready for the spill. Yes. And then, um, so we had one full, so we had all Tuesday to eat. Well, the remainder of the Tuesday to eat, which he already ate, ate a bunch more, done a bunch of water, a bunch of salt. Wednesday, ate a bunch more again. And then Thursday comes around and she's looking pretty good, but she is tiny bit spilled over. Just oh yeah. I was bit. like the, the drastic change from Wednesday to Thursday. I'm like, I went from being way too crispy to like, whoa, I'm starting to get a little too soft now. Like yeah. my abs are blurry now. And I'm like, oh man, I'm spilling. We got to stop the spill. <laughs> so we, we cut, we cut a little bit of carbs at the end of the day that Thursday. And I'm like, don't worry. The carbs are still just waiting to be absorbed because they're in this weird scenario of like, of, of you trying to fill out, which is, you know, it takes time for the, you to fully absorb those carbs. And then Friday came around and she was like, okay, it worked. I'm good. <laughs> but yeah. we already committed on Thursday. So she's worried about doing the show because we had to commit. And so Thursday we committed. I'm like, don't worry. Friday's going to be fine. And then Saturday she woke up and she was, she was it's on like, again. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We're good. Yeah. But it went, yeah, just like a roller coaster of being too lean to too soft and just, you know, I guess the biggest worry was the unpredictability factor of not even having like a full week in between that you're just, I basically just got off a plane and now I'm about to compete again. Yeah. So it just made everything so stressful and very unpredictable, very unpredictable because you never know if you're going to look too lean or too soft at that point. Um, so it was a risk, but you know, we're all about the crazy stuff. Yeah. Like I always say, do all the crazy things. So I did some crazy and I was like, I'm jumping in the show in my hometown less than a week from the Arnold where I was just across the pond <laughs> and 
competing. Like, <laughs> and it was a night show too. And that lasted so long. So it was just like one of those, like, let's just go for it, man. Yes. Let's do it. So I did some crazy and I decided to compete there and it paid off. Now, do I think I looked as good as I did at the Arnold? No, I don't think I did. I think it was a little bit, a little bit more on point at the Arnold, yeah. which is, you know, expected, but that doesn't mean we didn't learn things. And we got great feedback yeah. also. That what's what's really funny is um, Sandy Sandy was like, she told me, she goes, now her glutes, Adam, so you know, her, her glutes are a little bit flatter than they were and from what I saw at the UK pictures. And I was yeah. like, oh, you caught that? She's like, Adam, of course I caught that. And I, I made a funny <laughs> joke and I was like, "They're yeah, that's because I was sitting on them on the plane <laughs> for, you know, like so many hours. So <laughs> I sat on them for way too long and they got a little flatter. But <laughs> I think it was just like, I just in general wasn't quite as popping. But I mean, with the negative, there's also the positive. Yeah. And I made improvements in the posing department. So that's the goal is yeah. to always improve. So regardless, I don't want people to think that the only way you can improve is physique wise. There are many different ways you can improve. Absolutely. So my back walk too, they noticed improved. So that was a... a yeah. And then my posing. So I'm like, yes. So, you know, it's cool to see myself improve physically at the Arnold and then also with the posing at uh, the Nevada show. So it, it all worked out in the end. And um, with that being said, next show, Olympia. There we go. Olympia. I think, um, yeah, and the posing, people don't understand how important the posing is, like how extremely important it is. And I'm going to do an analysis on this show because I do think there was a girl who placed, who could have, probably been second if she placed if she posed right in that and so just to go into it just I'll set you guys up for that for uh, that'll come out this week but posing is critical and, and the good thing is everyone saying your posing is so much better now which is yeah. awesome you know I never thought it was like you know such a thing but that's the only thing I would pick on you for you know yeah. they would be like oh it's just her posing needs to be a little better and now they're saying her posing's better her posing's good her posing's like everyone's saying it so it's like a really exciting year going to Olympia um, I think I say this every year that like it's one of the more exciting years for me but this this one in particular is a lot at this Olympia where I'm very excited about. There's it's a, in our hometown. It's in our hometown. Yeah, really, it's just really exciting stuff that's going on. I'm gonna do. A, I'll do a whole break. We'll do a breakdown before yeah, the Olympia. Totally. But it's there's so much cool stuff going on at this Olympia, and um, yeah, I'm I'm really pumped for it now. Especially now we're gonna. Um, it's there's a there's you know Ashley does look better two weeks after a show, so there don't. You yeah, know, there maybe is a possibility, you know? I'll jump in the show before the Olympia. We'll see where I'm at. But yeah, that is a true thing. I look better the second show, which, you know, it's nice to get warmed up and kind of get the little kinks out and see if there's any last minute adjustments. Because, for example, when we did the Sasquatch show, although it went well, I saw many things we could fix, yeah. many things we could improve. And we made those improvements just in time for the Arnold, and it paid off big yeah. time. And big some, time. sometimes when we go into these shows, you know, um, we'll go in, you know, she wants to compete and make improvements in other areas. So we'll actually compete knowing she's not 100%. We'll be like, you know, she's 96%, 95%, but let's go and let's have fun. Let's see if we can work on the improvements of, of the posing and whatnot, because maybe, you know, we decided to do it kind of late and maybe her, she needs to lose like one pound of body fat or isn't as full or her shoulders just didn't pop as much this time. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you're, it's really hard to have a hundred percent prep. The UK one was 100% oh, yeah. prep for sure. And hopefully we can get 100% one for the Olympia too. But mm -hmm. throughout the year, when you compete that much, you're going to, you have to expect to be 95, 94, 98, you know, like you're, as long as we're in the, the upper middle to upper nineties, <laughs> I'm happy with the other shows. And for the Olympia and the Arnold's, I'm like hundred percent is, yeah. is the, this is the, this is the expectation. Absolutely. Yeah, so, and, yeah. and bikini, it's so tricky too. And this is another thing to note is like in bikini, it's like you got to be so careful not to be too soft or too lean. It's like this little few pound range of a sweet spot where they want you to be at because if you start looking too lean, you get marked down, too soft marked down, which I think, you know, we should also kind of go into, I would say in all three of these last shows, there's something to be noted and it's the factor of being in the middle. It's the, what do you call it? Somebody compared yeah. me to, what is it? The Goldilocks. You've got a Goldilocks physique. Like you're not too hot. That's good. I think it's Goldilocks. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Not too uh, hot, not too cold. Three bears. So, yeah. you know, I think to the untrained eye, and we you've gone over this before too, you might be like, well, why didn't this girl win? She's, her glutes are way like leaner and, and bigger and, and her shoulders are way bigger or, you know what I mean? But that's not bikini. Bikini, you don't want to be the most muscular. 
You don't want to be the smallest. You want to be in the middle. Yeah. Same thing with for your conditioning. You don't want to stand out being the leanest one in bikini. You don't. And you also don't want to stand out being the softest one. If you can hit like middle of the road, then that's perfect. And that was one of the feedbacks that I got at the Nevada show. Yeah. Like middle of the road. I one, I was in the middle of the road. I wasn't the leanest. I wasn't the softest. I wasn't the most muscular. I wasn't the smallest. Right in the middle, yep. which is, you know, it's kind of hard to wrap your mind around it because it's like your mind automatically wants to think, but this person's leaner, this person's bigger, this person has the biggest glutes on stage. And that's not necessarily what translates into a win for bikini because then we're getting into the territory of moving up. You can apply that. If you applied that rule, then we'd be talking about bodybuilders yeah, women's winning, bodybuilding winning women, bikini, yeah. women's bodybuilding winning <laughs> the, the bikini competitions because their glutes are technically bigger, whatever <laughs> they're bigger in general, they're leaner. Like you, do you see what I'm saying? So bikini is that sweet spot, that range. You want to be kind of in the middle conditioning wise and muscular wise. Yeah. And that's exactly what Sandy said. Sandy was said, you know, there was two girls that were just a little too lean in the top five and two girls that were a little too soft in the top five. And you were like perfect right in the middle where it should be. And that was kind of like, was the marker, and that's why you got a perfect score. So yeah. um, congrats I, on the perfect yeah, score. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, and I think, like, if you look at, I, I don't know, I don't think you mentioned it in the Arnold recap one, but if you look at the, the top call out, that I think you can see it most apparent in, like, the Arnold, what we're talking about, like, being in the middle. Yeah. Not the leanest, not the softest in the middle. Not the most muscular, not the smallest in the middle. So yeah, definitely in that top three there, you really see it. Yeah. yeah really see it in the top the three. The in-between. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. So... So yeah, it's it's an interesting thing to target for, and that's why bikini is such an art form. It is. It's like it. you, you get it if you're even just like a little bit off, you get marked down big time. It is so volatile because yeah. it's like anybody's game. Like, and I always say this: like, I go into a show, I never expect to win. I never assume it's an easy show. Like, just because even if the numbers aren't there, like, I don't think, whoa, this is so easy. No, it's never easy for bikini. It is never easy. And believe me, I've gotten worked. At, some, at small shows and yeah. and vice versa with big shows and then some bigger shows would were easier for me so you know it, it depends on who shows up how they show up and numbers aren't necessarily the ter determining factor if it's a competitive show or not yeah you never know in bikini like you, it's hard to it's hard to gauge because you also have to realize to other people other competitors can make you look softer and other competitors can make you look leaner so where's your middle area you know so it's tough in bikini it's unpredictable i would say yeah it's un and it's unpredictable because the because the standard is kind of it's hard there is no like criteria strict criteria so it's like it's hard to yeah. fully grasp why one girl will win and why another girl won't win and so i i love bikini because it lets i think keeps you guessing yeah keeps you guessing and younger you know i was always into i was always into art you know i even went to school for you know art and photography and stuff and like it, old black and white film for talking like I, I did it you know I loved it and I think that it just you have to kind of be it have that artistic mindset to be good as a bikini like as a bikini coach or a competitor and you have to like be able to see things in a different way the eye you know and yeah. it's funny because we have we'll we'll run into it a few times a year it'll be like you know a newer coach or whatever and they just don't have the eye yet and they don't see the problems and they have they might have like an amazing girl and I'm like mm -hmm. they just don't see the eye they don't they don't see it yet the artistic part of it because they're maybe their body will doesn't all they see is Bigger is better, leaner is better, and it's like they're like, "How do you do it?" And I'm like, "Yeah, you're just just off on like three things there, but I'm not going to tell you." Yeah, <laughs> yeah so. I want to also backtrack yeah. just a little bit to clarify one thing. When I'm going and talking about like being in the middle, like not being too lean, not being too soft, et cetera, et cetera, I'm talking in reference to pro shows because it's a different story at local shows. Yeah, where because there might be like we might have like novice amateur competitors and then somebody that's ready for the pro stage, and of course the the pro ready competitor is likely going to win, even though they are bigger and more muscular, whereas the competition isn't quite as developed yet. So when I say being in the middle of the road, I'm referring strictly to pros because it's more consistent. Yeah. That's what we're, I just want to clarify that because I don't want people to be That's like, a good clarification. Yes. Yeah. Cause I didn't want people to be like, well, you know, at, at an amateur show where there's like just newbie competitors that the, you shouldn't try to be, you know, looking like a pro cause you know, I'm sure, for example, if I stepped on stage with amateurs, I'm probably am the biggest and leanest, you yep. know what I mean? But it's a different story in pros because it's like everyone is more similar and on the same level. So I just wanted to clarify that in case anybody got confused. Yeah, a good example <laughs> yes. would be the girl who won the overall 
this weekend at your show in the amateur category was like she looked I was like I, I talked to her after the show I was like just go get your pro card like yeah, yeah you look like I thought actually I thought yeah. she was a and pro. she probably is leaner and bigger than yeah, the other girls because sure. she's at a different level she's already ahead of the game so that's something to clarify I just want to make sure yeah we put that out there for sure at the local level for sure yes. so anyway so the the now that we recapped a little bit of the last few shows I think it's important to when you guys do a show and when you finish your show to assess your physique, you know, look at your physique and break it down and look at, okay, what areas do I need to improve on more now? What do I need to focus on more? Cause you only have a few times a year uh, where you can, where I call it pull back the curtain, right? So you pull back the curtain means you pulled back all the body fat and now we can see what everything looks like. We could see what the tie-ins look like, how much of those glutes were actually muscle and how much of those glutes were actually body fat, which is a, really big one for a lot of girls. I have girls that think they're wellness and they're, they might even look wellness in, in tight pants, you know, and then they start getting ready for their show and their glutes just completely disappear. Right. I'm like, well, it was not that they disappeared is that that was all body fat and you lost all your body fat like that. You didn't lose much muscle, if any at all, like maybe a tiny bit, but that was all body fat. Sorry. You just store body fat more in your glutes, you know? So when you get that chance to pull back the curtain and really see what you look like, after you've leaned out, then you can really work on things. Then you can say, okay, your glute tie-in does need more work. Your glutes weren't as full as we thought they were. Your shoulders did need more work. You do store a lot of body fat on your tricep. Your arms aren't as big as we thought. They need more arms, you know? So whatever the case may be for your scenario, um, it's it's a really good thing to assess. And you have those pictures after the show. If you have a chance to um, take pictures of the show, great. If you go and buy stage photography there and they sell it for like 75 bucks, it's a great tool to use for future shows and it's nice to have, but honestly I'd say buy it if NPC news isn't like doing it for you guys. Um, because it is a great tool for you to an analyze. You can send in to, you know, send them to your coach or send them into a coach. I do them too. Uh, I try not to do too many of them. So don't overwhelm me with them. <laughs> I guess if I say this on the podcast, I get like 16 of them. I'm like, Oh, it's a whole weekend. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the, it's a good way to analyze and say, okay, what do I need to work on now? And how do we target the workout specifically for those areas now that I can see them and make those improvements? Um, and that's something to do important to do after every show when there's time. Now we have time, you know, we have three shows. We have three shows that we can look at pictures at. Um, we know that the look for the Arnold is the target show. Mm -hmm. And then if we can make that look a little bit more in the shoulders, and then I think that that is all we're really going to need at this point is yeah. a tiny bit more in the shoulders there. I shouldn't get any leaner, honestly. Mm -hmm. I don't think any, even, even we need to like back off trading abs too a little bit, yeah, I think. That too, um, yeah. You know, because my abs just, uh, they started might've... popping. I barely train them. See, I, we went I went for not... years without training <laughs> them, years upon years. And then what was it? The first show of this year, uh, the Legends Classic. We're like, oh, you know what? Maybe we can start training them a little bit because they were a little lackluster. So I did start training them, and boy, they responded like crazy. So we're like, okay, forget that. No more abs. <laughs> yeah. No yeah. more abs for another two years. We're yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah, we'll do abs for two weeks every two years. Yeah. That's, that's the scenario. <laughs> yeah. So I thought everything, you know, I agree with you. I think um, my shoulders and arms, my upper body internal has come such a freaking long way. Yeah. And I'm so proud. Um, I think a little bit more would be a little, be helpful. Nothing like crazy, but just, yeah. you know, but it's cool to see we're, we're moving towards like, okay, we're like almost where we need to be. So always constantly improving, but I'm glad that we got a chance to see like what I looked like at these shows and we unveiled that curtain yeah. <laughs> so we could see, okay, this is what they look like now. So let's, uh, curtain them back up for the Olympia and then just make their grand reveal. So. Grand reveal. Yeah. Grand reveal. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's tiny little things, you know, and it's, it's, uh, you know, we're going to really focus really hard on these next, uh, what do we have? 11 weeks now? Is it 11 ish weeks? Is it? Something like that. I hope so. Yeah. So, uh, we have a lot of, we have a good amount of time to really yeah. focus on that area and, and make some, some small improvements. Um, and a, and a good thing is for you guys that are watching, you know, if someone is saying to you, you can't build muscle in a caloric deficit, you can't build muscle while competing from show to show. Uh, Ashley's proof you can and she has you know and it's been consistent right. for four years you know? I would say though sometimes at this point I'm more of like in a, a main maintenance calorie if I'm just going show to show so I'm not always in a calorie deficit I don't want you guys thinking True. I'm wasting yeah. away I'm not it's more like okay I'm lean as I need to be now let's maintain kind of thing and then of course there'll be some days maybe even some weeks where I dip below the maintenance but it's not long yeah. it's not long at I all I guess it'd be yeah that is good clarification you know what I'm Cause, saying? Cause, cause honestly, otherwise I'd be wasting away into nothing <laughs> yeah and it yeah because you do it for such yeah. a long 
long period of time. We yeah. do, and she does stay so right. lean that we do maintenance calories yeah. probably. 75% of the time? Yeah, yeah. 75% is Pretty, maintenance. Yeah, we're because we are hitting, what are we, 1,700 and so calories or so, 1,800 calories, yeah. like in the maintenance phase or so. And so that is a majority of the time. And then the deficit phase, because she does stay lean, is only, you know, it's only, hey, lose four pounds, five pounds. So it's- Yeah, and that will be like the last few weeks maybe. Yeah, it's like three weeks type of thing. We ramp up cardio, yeah. you know, that type of thing. So it's like, um, so I guess I should we should say it. you could do it while staying lean. Yeah, and you can still do it while lean. you're- Calorie deficit too, but yeah. I mean, especially for someone like me that competes so often, I just want to clarify that yeah, I'm not, I'm not doing this like 800 calories for <laughs> months upon months. No, no, no. It's not like that. Like I mentioned before, the, the reward I get from maintaining close to stage weight is the fact I don't have to go too extreme for anything, honestly. And I think people would be, if they followed me around for a week during like peak week, they might be quite surprised how yeah. like easy <laughs> Yeah. My peak week is how low key it is, how like not extreme it is, how it's not as rigid as people think. Like I'm just like, you know. Yeah, peak week, that's a thing. I think that's one of the biggest mistakes people make is they get too crazy with peak week. Yeah. And it's really just be in shape, you know, just mm -hmm. be in shape just before roll peak in. week and just, just control, you know, if you can control the controllables and you can make it predictable by not doing all these crazy things. I used to do all these crazy things that everyone else does. You know, I used to do the water loading early in the week and then sodium loading and cutting sodium and manipulate. I know how to do all these things. You know, I've done this with bodybuilders since I was 18 years old, since I worked in supplement stores at 16, you know, like yeah. I've been doing it for years. I know how to do it. It just doesn't provide a predictable result because it could go good and you might get, you might get a 2%, 3% better look, but the risk is significantly greater than that two to 3%. And the, the, the odds of hitting that every time are significantly worse than that two to 3% you might get. So I'd rather just work a little harder and get that two to three percent in terms of just being leaner and in shape going into peak week than to try to manipulate it at the end and achieve the same result. Mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's less stressful as an athlete yeah. too, because you're not just like, well, you know, last week was a little stressful because I had the unpredictability factor. That, that's a good <laughs> example of how a break, like how most people do their peak yeah, weeks. Yeah, that's week. not typical. For that's that's because that's wild, <laughs> yeah. right? It's like, oh, we're here, here. Oh, we're here. We're gonna cut back. Oh, more cardio, sauna, expel this, that. Yeah. You're like uh, the guy's like, what's going on with my body? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We just kind of coast into peak week for the most part. We're yeah. just coasting. It's usually the easiest week for me. But like, I would say even a few weeks up until then, I'm I'm never as rigid as people think I am. No, it's funny. I'm really not. I'll and I I get it once in a while too. I mean, luckily I have this podcast, right? But before we had this podcast, and I wasn't so like people didn't know what my peak weeks were. I'd get girls that were getting ready for the show. And, um, you know, this is like four years ago and they look great. And then they get their peak week and they're like, they just want, they like think they should do more. And they're like, they're, they're like mad. They feel like I'm not giving them enough during peak week. Like I'm just like, you know, just handing them something like something like, you know what I mean? Like they felt like cheat, cheated, yeah. you know, like this is my peak week kind of thing. Like you're this, you know, one of the premier coaches, like, this is my peak. And I'm like, yeah, you're in shape. <laughs> like, what do you, what do you, you want me to mess that up for you? I can mess it up for you if it makes you feel better. <laughs> like, yeah. And then like after I started doing the podcast and then they, they'd they win after doing it, then they'd be like, okay, he was right. You know, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's funny cause it's still, it, it doesn't happen nearly as often, but girls have to believe it. Right. They have to believe, okay, this is how, this is how he does it. This is how it works like for them. And it's like, it is funny because it's like, oh, here's some more carbs this day, a little less this day, yeah, a little more this day. Check in again. All right, we're probably good. You're like <laughs> sometimes, like, you know, you hear it in, in these peak weeks are way too strict. Like people even ask, like, am I allowed to have coffee on peak week? I've never. I mean, <laughs> yeah, of course, have coffee. <laughs> like it's okay. Have seasonings. Seasonings. You can have seasonings and salt. Oh, it's a lovely thing. You know, like you don't have to be that crazy with it. If you're in shape, just coast on in. You know, it's like, yeah, mine's just kind of. More, more of a normal kind of lifestyle than what people think of her peak week anyway. So. Yeah, it's like if you look, if it hasn't messed you up going into peak week, then you could probably doing it during peak week type yeah. of thing, you know? Now we're talking like, you know, Olympia level prep, get the waistline as small. Yeah, we'll cut some different things, you know, artificial sweeteners and whatnot just in case. stevia though. Yeah, and then... You know, it's it's little things. It's little, little, little changes. Like just so. in case these things. Yeah, exactly. And honestly... Probably doesn't do anything, but we would be yeah. sure just in case. One thing I wouldn't do though, is have like a new food that I've not had in a long time. Like it's not like I'm going to have like a loaf of bread or anything. I mean, that that's kind of silly because you never know how your body's going to react to like bloating and stuff like that. But, um, you know. Yeah, and I will say the carb choices you make during peak week are are something that 
needs to be tested. You know, yes. some people can do potatoes and have no problem. They're like load up with potatoes. And then some people get super watery with potatoes. So um, I've had some people do their peak week and then they load up their carbs and they'll try it like the first day with oatmeal and it just goes completely south. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, we probably should have done every carb <laughs> oatmeal. Uh, so now for the most part, it's just, for the most part, it's white rice, rice cakes, you know, cream of rice. So it's, that's like the safe s- carb, safe for almost everyone, mm. not everyone, but almost everyone, you know, like some people get softer with white rice, um, you know, like, like Kimber doesn't do white rice so well in high amounts, you know, and it's funny, she does bread better which is the weirdest thing ever whoa yeah it's like so you got to test these things in the off season too and just like test what works for you what doesn't work for you like how your waistline responds and you know different volumes and whatnot too and that's another good thing about competing often is you can try new things and and test it out oh yes yeah. we do and oh. speaking of which did you know my suit from the arnold and the suit from nevada state was two completely different suits I bet you didn't know that. Really? It they looks look so the similar. same, like, blue edges they, and stuff, right? It was very similar. The stones were different, though, so I actually had two, so I was testing that one out, too. I was testing them out. See, you got you to try. <laughs> yeah. You got to try. You got to nail down. Is look it the for shade of red the same? Um, so I, if you see it up close, you'll see okay. it. You'll understand. But, um, yeah, it's a little different, but I think I liked my Arnold UK suit better, honestly. They've been, they've been nailing it lately. Dude, all the time. All yeah, the shout time. out to Angels. You know, I was at uh, the Angels fashion show um, weekend again. And they just, in Texas. Yeah. They, they just do such a good job, uh, you know, as a community, like building a community around, it's like not just suits, but a community. It's, it's pretty cool to see Mm -hmm. like all the, all the stuff they do, the seminars and, and the education part of it and the athletes they bring in. And it's just a cool, I don't know. It's just a cool thing that they do. It's the only company I've seen do this kind of thing. Um, and make these for, for your trophies. And make ridiculous. (laughs) What's funny is that like Ashley will come up with the idea and, and to, and like, I could imagine being like, as a business owner, right? I have this crazy client, right? And I'm like, <laughs> she, like, wait, this, like, this, this client wants me to do what? Like, I, I, but, but they're like, they're like, yes, they're like, yes, jump, yeah. jump on it. Yes. Oh, this is funny. So anyway, <laughs> like, it'll come out. <laughs> anyway, um, now going into the post-show assessments on your physique and after show to show, I think that the other thing we need to look at is going to be like game planning on what you're going to do next. So in Ashley's case, right, she looked great at the Arnold. No reason she shouldn't be competing again, right? If she wants mm-hmm. to compete, compete again. Um, now, in your scenario, maybe you are a – because I always have that too. I'll have it happen, you, and you probably have it with your athletes too. They'll be like, I want to do this show and 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 this show, right? And I'm like, well, hold on. Let's see what you look like at your first yeah. show. And if you get – you know, if you get 10th place, what are we doing? You know, what are we – why are we even talking about other shows yet? Focus on the first one, and then let's see how you do. And then if you are, you know – fifth or better, third or better, and we don't have a lot of room of improvements to go, let's just keep going. Yeah, and I think too, it's like you got to assess what kind of improvements are there. If it's something like build more muscle, yeah, maybe not. (laughs) But if it's something like fix your posing, okay, easy fix. You can fix that in a week, you know? So I think it all depends on what the necessary adjustment is, you know? Is it something that's doable within a span? Yeah. Or is it something that's going to take a long time? Yeah, good, perfect, exa- exactly, great mm-hmm. way of saying Because if, if it's just, you just need to get better condition, then yeah, maybe three weeks before the next show, four weeks before the next show would be better than the show the next weekend or something like that. But yeah, so a lot of things go after after you go to a show. Um, I like that we talk about, you know, this part of it because it's an important part of it that's overlooked because more, more times than not, and this happens with me too, I'm not above it, <laughs> more times than not, athletes will kind of ghost their coach after the show and they just kind of ghost them. <laughs> They're like, oh, no follow up with them after the show. They just leave and then they go eat. And then they're kind of, I would say, I don't want to say, um, I guess I'll say embarrassed to check in because they put on so much right after the show that first week, they just ate a whole bunch and they don't want to do a check in. And then it just kind of spirals and goes farther and farther and farther. And then like a month, six weeks later, they're like, I need to get back in shape. Like I, I, I kind of went off, whatever. Right. So the other thing about doing the post show check-ins and analysis and a week later check-in is that it keeps you accountable too, and your most susceptible time to to kind of blowing up and gaining back body fat. So, along with you know you assessing your physique and then getting a new goal, because I think what more than anything people just need a goal. You know they need that time based deadline where they can focus on something, whether it's a show, a wedding, an improvement season, whatever. Um, it's really important to get those pictures, get them into your coach. Say what do we need to work on now? What is it? What is it? The uh, what's the next phase look like? And then you guys come up with a plan together. And if you have a good coach, you really should trust your coach on that one on what they say to do going forward. You know, I have, I've had athletes that were too small 
by, you know, by decent margins. And I'm like, look, you shouldn't be doing any more national shows right now. Like you're just, you're not going to win a pro card. Sorry. You know, it sucks to say that, but you're not going to win a pro card with how much size you have. But they're like, well, I want to do this national show because it's down the street. What about this one? It's only six weeks away. I'm like, you're not going to build enough muscle in six weeks. Like, what's the point, you know? And so when you have um, the, you know, your, your, your actions need to match your goals. So in that scenario, the goal was to get a pro card. The actions of competing right away again in, in four more weeks at another national show didn't make sense, right? So you have to let your coach kind of take the wheel on those things. And it's, sometimes it's tough. It's tough to hear, you know? But um, if, you're, if you trust them, that's why you signed up with them. You should let them have that. Okay, what do we do next? And kind of listen to it, you know, and, and whether it's improvement season or whatever and not fight it because it's, they're probably, you know, the coach, the, and just to give you guys like some insight, the coaches, if they're good coaches, they should want to win more than you. Like they should win through you and that's how they get like their enjoyment out of your prep. It's, you know, it's, that's how I get mine. It's definitely nothing besides that. Like I want to win. I want to dominate. Uh, you know, every single show that I can. And when you do that, then I do that. And it makes me feel really good. It's like, it's the reward, you know? Um, so if the coach has that same like mentality, you should understand, Hey, they're not going to steer me wrong. Cause they want to win more than me. Like, it's not even a, I always tell them, I'm like, Hey, it's kind of a selfish thing, but it's in your benefit. <laughs> like I want to win through you. You know, I want to go to the show and like, look at the other coaches. Like, yeah, I got you this time. Cause we, we do that all the time to each other. So it's like, it's just a fun, it's a fun thing, you know? So, um, something to just be open to and, and analyze after your show and give them the ground and don't be so resistant to it. Even if it doesn't match with what you thought your goals were going to be this season, you know? So heck yeah. Yeah. Heck to the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, Ashley, what's your, what, you know, closing out here. I know, I know that you, you say you want to be, you want to, you want to be a legend one day. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll disagree on this, but I feel that you've done enough to qualify in that regard already. But I feel like I'm not, I haven't even gotten started yet. I mean, <laughs> I started to like, chill. chill. So, so <laughs> I mean, geez. Yeah. Yeah. You should, you should really uh, put, put forth more, more effort. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so what are your, what are, you know, we'll let you close this one out. What are your words of advice? New competitor, new bikini competitor. She wants to be the next Ashley Kotwasser. What do you, uh, you know, how are, I guess it would more so be better to answer with the question, how are you able to maintain this uh, for so long? Not your body fat, but the mentality of it and, and the desire of it too. Sure. Because it's hard. Oh, it's gratitude, man. Listen, I uh, never thought I would be where I am today, ever, 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 ever. And I just feel like I've exceeded like my goals big time, you know? Not that I thought I was ever like, not worthy of it necessarily, but I'm a very realistic person. So, um, you know, ever since I won the Olympia, which I won it quite unexpectedly <laughs> the first time, um, a lot of opportunities came my way and I was grateful for each and every one of them. And to this day, I work with still some of the same, you know, sponsors and stuff like that, that I was in the beginning. And I realized I'm in a very unique scenario. Um, and I take advantage of the time I have here because it's so much fun for me. So I think, you know, I, I stay competing because I'm just so grateful. And it's just a lot of fun. It's honestly the time of my life. I look forward to shows like you have no idea. And I'm sure I'm going to get bored this gap in between the Olympia that I'm not competing. And it's going to be hard to watch everyone else compete. Um, but I just find it to be so fun. So in a sense, you can't take it too seriously. Um, but just realize... Whoever is stepping on stage, and you don't even have to be at this level, obviously, but just realize even you stepping on stage, no matter how well you do, you did better than 99.99 people, percent of people ever could. Or, you know, these people wish they could only look like you one day, but you've accomplished something great. So just keep that in mind. No matter what place you get, it's like you've already beat most of the population. It's like... You know, so you got to take things into perspective in a sense and not just focus only on winning all the time. That's not, that shouldn't be the determining factor of your happiness, just the journey itself, I guess, you know. Hmm. There you go, Ashley. So words of wisdom from the best. <laughs> the bikini goat of all time. So congratulations, 37 IFBB pro wins, yeah. uh, the most in history. 
I'll leave it. I'll leave it with that because that's a just. It's just crazy on its own <laughs> to even say that. To I was, witness it is just. When I turned pro, I just thought I would win one show and that would be it. Like, and my life would be made <laughs> just one show. But I did that thirty-seven times. Crazy. Yeah, if, if someone has one pro win in their career, that is a good career. Yeah, yeah I, that's, that's the way good, I thought. I was like, yeah, I'm good, satisfied with one. That's a good. <laughs> career. Yeah, it's it's wild. It's wild thing to witness. It doesn't even make sense to be honest. I know. It sounds like it's not. It's like a. You would say it as like a joke. Like, oh yeah, good luck. And then you're, what are you going to win thirty seven times? Like, it's like, <laughs> like you know apparently like, people think they can. You know, <laughs> yeah, you know. yeah, exactly. It's, <laughs> um, but no, it's it's been fun, right? Yeah. And I'm just getting started. I promise you, I'm just getting started. Like yeah. people think I'm kidding. No, I'm not kidding. I'm just yeah. getting started. So anyway, with that, guys, <laughs> thank you so much for everything. Um, Ashley K. Ashley K. Fit on Instagram. Um, YouTube.com forward slash Team Elite Physique. If you want to see some other things, we're going to do some Arnold recaps and whatnot. Uh, uh, you did. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the recap of like this last weekend show. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, and then, uh, use code for Ashley. Ashley K Fit at Angel Competition Bikinis. And add um on Muscle Muscle Egg. It is forward slash Team Elite Physique. That helps out the podcast. Helps get Ashley some more eggs and eggs, some more eggs, wins. Eggs, eggs, so, eggs equal, equal wins. <laughs> anyway, with that, guys, thank you so much. We'll talk to you later. Bye bye.